Like several other sagas, Erpike saga begins with describing the reign of Harald Fairhair, or Finehair, king of Norway, who took office around 870, when the settlement of Iceland was just beginning. Actually, in many sources, Harald's actions are seen as the main catalyst for the settlement. The people who move to Iceland are those who are too proud to succumb to his rule. Harald is the king who unifies Norway into one kingdom. Before his rule, Norway is a patchy conglomeration of petty kingdoms. But Harald is the first king to rule over the whole country. Some of the first Icelandic settlers are reported to have been his enemies. Two of them take center stage at the very beginning of Erpike saga. Þórólfur Mostraskeg is one, and the other is his friend, Björn, the Easterner. They become friends when Björn is outlawed after claiming lands that King Harald intended for himself. Björn finds Thorolf, who gives him shelter, and is consequently outlawed as well. Thorolf goes to Iceland after consulting the god Thor and becomes a chieftain in his new homeland. Björn arrives a bit later and settles right next to Thorolf. Torve Tulinius, professor of medieval Icelandic studies at the University of Iceland, has pointed out that the story of the two friends, Björn and Thorolvur, is essentially a demonstration of how the settlement involved social mobility for some people. In Norway, Björn is of a higher rank than Thorolvur. But after they move to Iceland, Thorolvur becomes a chieftain, but Björn is only a simple farmer. In Torvis' view, this gives evidence to the intentions that the author of Erpike Saga had when composing his work. One could even speak of an agenda in this context. He has an agenda, mm. whether he knows it or not, yeah. and uh, he, uh, the agenda seems to be to oppose, on the one hand, Thorolder, who is not of a very prominent family. He's, he's a reasonably powerful man in Norway, but he's not of the highest aristocracy. He's not a part of the military rulers or leaders who, who could be competing with King Harald Feinherr. He is a bit lower, but he uh, becomes uh, a friend with Björn the Easterner, who is uh, in revolt against the King of Harald Feinherr, who is from this high-level family. So uh, when Thorolver has to leave Norway because he had, well, because of his friendship with Björn the Easterner, he comes to Iceland, and he kind of seems to be led by uh, the his uh, high seat pillars mm -hmm. are are taken by a, uh, by the the currents to Thorsnes, and he is a devotee of of Thor, the god Thor, so he uh, he is a special friend to Thor, but his uh, his aristocratic friend comes later, and uh, Thor gives him. Uh, tells him where to establish him himself, himself, and that is a smaller, uh, smaller uh, settlement area than that of Thorolver. So in a way, the tables have turned. Uh, so the uh, social hierarchy, as it was presented in Norway before the settlement, has a bit changed. Uh, they remain friends, but Thorolver is the Gwadi, not uh, not uh, Björn. So it, it, I think that the. The story, uh, that the purpose of the story of Thorolver Mostraskek is to, uh, to to underscore the religious dimension of uh, of the pagan priests, uh, but also to show that these pagan priests or that the chieftains were not all of them necessarily descendants of great aristocrats in Norway, and so it, I think it it all uh, it has to be related with the the interest in relationship with Norway and the Norwegian aristocracy, which had been kind of growing in Iceland since the middle of the 12th century, and was especially pertinent in uh, the period when Sno when Erbiga is being composed, because well, sometime in the period between 1230 and 1270, which is the Sturlung Age, which is when um, the Icelandic chieftains are competing, uh, uh, and some of them want to become Mem some of them are becoming members of the royal uh, Norwegian court, mm -hmm. and uh, many of them are are pointing at their uh, 
blood relations with, uh, with the high aristocracy of Norway, where, uh, well, others can't. The Stutlums can't. The Högdailir, the Ottaverjar, are the, uh, the competing families in Iceland in the, in the uh, <coughs> 13th century, are blood-related, uh, uh, yes, are cl close, rel uh, reasonably close relatives of the Norwegian kings, but the Sturlungs are not. Mm. And so that, would be, that is one dimension, I think, to the story of Thorold Mostrakek.